Good morning again. In case you're just joining us, it's the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and it's time for our first hot topic. Nigerian governors, they're kicking against federal government's directives on refund of palliative fund. They've been given 5 billion naira. Well, that has been approved for them. Already 2 billion naira has been given to them out of the 5 billion naira. But they've been told that they would have to refund the money. And to that, they are saying, no, if we refund it, how is it a palliative? Well, our guest this morning is Mohammed Abdullahi, public affairs analyst. And he's joined us to take a look at this. Good morning to you, Mohammed. Uh, good morning, Nigerians. Uh it's a pleasure to be here. All right. So, Mohammed, when this news broke out on Friday, Thursday, Friday, when after they had that meeting uh, about the, the federal government's approval of that money, well, we didn't get to know, well, some of us didn't get to know the kind of heated argument that followed that agreement. You know, that it was, um, uh, there was a shouting match over this directive to have that money returned at the end of the day. How do you see this new development? Or how did you process it when it broke out on Thursday, Friday? Yeah, um, I think uh, I would like to side with the governors on this issue. Because uh, if you are giving a grant or a loan. I think there should be that there's a specific difference between what a grant is and then what a loan is. Mm. Uh, the government, I mean, the federal government in this instance is saying it's a grant for you know the sake of palliatives in order to cushion the effect of the subsidy removal. Then I don't see any reason why it should be tied to a loan repayment. On the other hand, I think it it would have been. Um, wiser from the federal government to specifically mention at the beginning of all this that no this wouldn't be like a grant or like a charity disbursement it would be a loan so it means uh, each state that is um, that feels it is capable or that feels it needed that kind of intervention will actually apply and get such loan where in which uh, all the repayment uh, plans would have been discussed and then uh, you know, acceptable by each party involved. But, you know, it's uh, the federal government on this instance, at the beginning of all this mention, it's, uh, you know, it's just to cushion the palliatives of, uh, um, it's, it's just to cushion the effect of subsidy. And this is like, you know, to be disposed as palliatives and even gives a kind of guideline on how states should go about it and what states should expect. Uh, so I, I think it's right for the government, uh, for, I mean, for the state governors to uh, not in this stance protest, but at least, um, uh, you know, complain about the idea of repayment. And mind you, uh, if you look at some of the challenge, some of the complaints of the state governors is the fact that most times at the secretariat of the Nigerian gov governors forum, things like these are usually discussed first, you know, and then they take a unified position. At least majority of them would have taken a unified position before uh, accepting such kind of offer or, they, or, or making uh, their, their own kind of offer to the uh, federal government. But in this instance, it's like the federal government just made a, direct, a directive, uh, took a position alongside the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum. I mean, the, uh, the executive Abdul Rahman, of, yeah, Abdul Rahman, uh, Abdul yes, Razak. Abdul Rahman, yeah, the executive governor of Pakistan. And then, you know, it's like it's binding upon all other governors. So they, they, they feel it's not proper. They feel that's not the way uh, the procedures of the Nigerian government, uh, Nigerian governors is wrong, you know. So I, 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 I think I, I side with the Nigerian governors in this instance. So well, uh, what, it's, what it's, do you say to those who say, who are side, who would side the federal government and say, look, the federal government is not saying that they should repay the 100% of it. They're saying 52% of this money is given to the states as grants, while 48% of the five billion is to be paid back on an installment basis within 20 months to the CBN by the states and the local government areas in Nigeria. You do not think that the federal government is being fair in saying that 48% of it should be returned? Um, yes, you, you might be right to say uh, in terms of fairness, fairness but again, 
was this discussed, was this accepted by the majority of uh, the people, I mean the state governors now, to whom this, um, uh, this grant or, you know, this loan, depending on what you want to call it, <laughs> is to be supposed to, you mm -hmm. know, so that is the challenge. You know, you, you just, um, the, the challenge for me, I think, is the fact that the state governors were not carried along. Mm. So they felt it's like a decision by the federal government, the presidency, and then to their dismay again is that just one of their own, who happened to be their chairman, their leader now, accepted that without discussing with, uh, with them uh, at their own level. So I think that is even the major grievances, because that seems to be like uh, they are being handed out things without their own approval without their own knowledge and they, they, they feel to be uh, a kind of secondary uh, in the decision making uh, opportunity that arises there so i think that is the major challenges i understand that it's not the hundred percent that they are to pay back like you mentioned 48 percent of the four billion or five billion because that's another challenge what we've been seeing yeah we've had five billion but what we've been seeing uh, flying online even in the communique is four billion you know, but so uh, what, what the challenge is the discussion, the acceptance of the terms and conditions of either this loan or grant by the federal government. So I think that is the major issue. And I think is, 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 uh, there should be a way forward there in, 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 in probably in some other decisions that will affect Nigerians and particularly the, uh, you want the state governors to, to, to take charge. We need to have an inclusive discussion with all stakeholders so that this kind of a situation would arise. I'm just wondering, uh, why did the governors even not say we are not ready? Because none of them seems to have a, a, a register or, or data that they're going to disburse this money. What are, what are they going to do with the five billion? Are they going to to just give out to people who they call poorest of the poor, or are they going to put it in infrastructure that will be beneficial to everybody and all that? I know the federal government has dictated to them the kind of things that they need to do, but you know, if you make a calculation of uh, one on, um, of five billion, five billion uh, times the thirty-six states will give you like a hundred and eighty uh, billion naira. And as far as I'm concerned. Um, 200 billion or 200 million people are the ones that are poor in Nigeria. The, the rest, the number that is above the 200 million will be the ones that are really rich. So if you are dividing that by 200 million, you will get just 900 naira for every individual. But the state governors didn't say we are not ready, we don't have data, we don't know what we are going to do, how we are going to disperse this money. They are just fighting over the fact that they were asked to return this money. Are they not being selfish in some way? Yes, you, 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 are, you are right. But again, if you've been following the proceedings, you understand that, for instance, the Kwara state government, for instance, which I know uh, have come out with a kind of, a, you know, a template and a plan on how to actually disburse the money. So perhaps uh, maybe the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum has, uh, is one step ahead of his colleagues. Uh, I don't know. But I have seen online, particularly on the verified uh, uh, handle of the state governor, I mean, Abdul Rahman, uh, mentioning what they intend to do uh, with, with the money disbursed. In fact, he, they laid out a template of what they need to do from what to local government and, and so on and so forth. Majorly what uh, I see is, the, is uh, for instance, taking the choir state government as an example, is that they want to use a lot of, uh, majority of the monies to, um, to disburse food. Because that's the challenging thing here in Nigeria. You know, most people are hungry. Uh, if, if, if you go online, if you take samples in, the, in, in social circles, you understand that the major situation uh, confronting Nigerians daily is the fact that uh, the, the prices of food have skyrocketed. People can no longer feed probably three times daily. is now one time or two times for those people who are even privileged. So uh, the Kwara State government, for instance, is saying, yeah, majority of these things will go into ensuring that uh, the poorest of the poor uh, will, will get to have food. But mind you, again, uh, there is no clear template on how to, like you rightly mentioned, in terms of data, on how to indicate who is actually the poorest of the poor. 
you know, uh, government officials going to march on every street in Kwara State or even all over Nigeria to indicate uh, or to ensure or to know uh, who is poorest of the poor, how do they intend to do that and so on and so on. And that's where data comes in, you know. We keep harping on the fact that we don't have accurate data. I don't want to believe that we don't have data at all in any part of Nigeria. I, I sincerely don't want to believe because we have a whole, a whole lot of agencies, uh, the MBS, uh, even the MPC and so on and so forth, who are charged with this responsibility. Yeah, but, but the, the, I think the major issue is the accuracy of such data and how updated it is. Mm -hmm. For instance, the last time we had census was, most that was, was more than, uh, uh, almost I think 20 years ago or so, or 15 or so years ago. So, but how, I, how, how do we update these things? How do we update the data that we have? Because we keep saying we don't have data at all, which I don't think is true. But how do we update? Because as time keeps, as, as, as the years keep rolling by, uh, we needed to be updating what we have, you know, to, 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 to be accurate. So, um, but, but, but that's a big challenge. Uh, it to, I, I think to my understanding, the, each state governor will look at uh, each sector uh, what they feel is the pressing need in their respective state, there will never be a general template. I understand that. So each state governor, I think, is at the whims of the caprices of the state government, uh, respectively, across the country, to look at each sector that is that they needed to impute that money so that it will affect their citizens and their people uh, the very best. But they, they <laughs> sorry, the the government, that is the governors, even the federal government, uh, seems. Uh, they seem far removed from what the people really are experiencing. And you talk about data that they have, it's just that it's not accurate. Even the MPC, saddled with the responsibility of getting our data, uh, the last time they told us about our population, they say it's estimated at maybe uh, 210 or so. They, they are not even sure of the number, let alone knowing who is in need of what and all that. Now, the, the, my worry is a democracy should be about the people and what they want. How much consultation have these governors even made with their people to know what they want? i give you an instance. Uh, Maureen always says, uh, I talk about my village. But if you go to my village, I doubt if what they want is 900 naira per person or some other food that you're going to give us. If you have money to buy a bag of rice, People in my village will, will prefer you giving us um, cartons of herbicides, for instance, that we can use to make our farms, to weed our farms, to clear the grasses and all that. That way, after the, uh, during the harvest season, we will have more food rather than giving us a bag of rice that we'll eat and finish or maybe share among us with money that could have bought more than a carton of herbicide. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the governors have not done anything to interact with the people and know what they really want. They're just sitting in their state houses and thinking of the things that the people should want. Do you think that is the right thing to do if you want to give palliatives to the poorest of the poor? It is not, absolutely. And that's why I mentioned earlier that um, it behoves on each state government, you know, to look at the respective um, areas, respective sectors in their respective state where these funds will be best channeled to affect their citizens and people the very best. Yes, like, like, like you said, you said Quara has already done that. Did Quara do the needful? Because no, no. I, I mentioned, I said they, 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 they made a template, particularly on social media, on how they wanted to disburse the money, majorly in, uh, you know, creating a kind of uh, uh, what I would call uh, food food palliative, for instance. But again, still, the challenge, like I mentioned earlier, is the fact that there is no clear template to indicate or to say, mm. these are the poorest of the poor that this will get to, mm. you know? So if, if you allow me to come back to your, to, your, to, your, to, your, to your statement earlier again. Now, you know, you made mention of your village. Mm. What your village needs, even in, I don't know where your village is, let's, let's, say, let's say River State, for instance, it, 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 it actually will be different from what probably even the next village that borders your village yes. needed, mm. you know. Uh, so so it, it's, it's not a general thing. We are on the same um, um, page here. Yeah. There should be, like you rightly mentioned, which I agree with, there should be a kind of, uh, I don't want to use the word investigation, but a kind of uh, like, like, like check 
a kind of discussion yeah. with the stakeholders here. Who are the people, mm. you know, to say what do you actually need? There shouldn't be a blanket general, you know, um, 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 assumption from the state governors and the state government to say, okay, no, this will, everybody just needed a, a bag of rice. Because that's, in fact, that's, that seems to be like the general thing mm. most of them probably are looking at. Just bags of rice here and there and then so on. But I think it should, it should, it should be beyond that. What does the people, what do the people need? And then how best can we achieve this? Because even when we say food here, like and you, you gave a very good analogy. When we say food here, it doesn't mean, yes, it must be rice, it must be maize, it must be that. Yeah, we can also generate more food by ensuring that um, farm produce are better, farm produce are more, like you rightly mentioned. So if you have a happy site, you know, to produce more, which is better, you know, than just say giving a cup of rice or even a bag of rice that might not take more than one month and it's gone. So I think it's behoves of the government, like I keep saying, to actually look at properly what the, the people need. And how do they do this? It's not just like you said, by sitting down in their governor, government houses and just assuming. No, no, no. They need probably a town hall meeting. I know in most of the states, for instance, in Lagos, where I, where I am at the moment, I know in my community, we have a community development association. We have a chairman who understand the basic need of our community immediately. So I think government can leverage on that. Probably call up a town hall meeting of community development associations of, you know, maybe probably head of community development associations in their respective states mm -hmm. and then discuss this thing. And then from there, they should be able to pick up uh, one or two things that really they are the various community needs in their various states. All right. So, um, Mohammed, it does appear that we stand the risk of having this palliative bungled. We've been asking for palliatives, palliatives. Um, the money has come. Uh, we're not satisfied that it's enough to achieve what we need to be achieved, to effectively cushion the effects of the subsidy removal. On one of the dailies this morning, the Guardian newspaper, you have condemnation trails, rowdy distribution of palliatives in Lagos. It does appear also to us, as I said, that we're, we may we stand the risk of bungling this. The state governors, how ready are they in their own space to help their people fix the problems that have arisen from this, you know, fell subsidy removal that they are suffering from? And do we also stand the risk of after now? Whatever they decide to do with this five billion naira, either accept it or reject it, do we stand to see a situation where after now, Nigerians are still wondering where are the palliatives? We need more palliatives, and then what? What then after that? Your your questions are quite entangled, but uh, <laughs> let me let me answer to the best of my ability. I think I think firstly. Yes, one of our challenges is that um, from from every facet of our lives in Nigeria, we don't really prepare. We like to be very reactionary. You know, we like to react to things rather than be uh, proactive. Uh, like you rightly mentioned, yes, um, the subsidy have been removed. Subsidy have been removed now for at least two months or more. But then there seems to be a slow pace from every uh, a, a part of government, say federal, state, and even local government on how to really question this effect, you know. Uh, so it's that, that, that's a big problem, you know. And now that a little, I wouldn't say much is being done. A little is being done in the, in, in, in the case of this five billion being disbursed, uh, in which two billion has already been disbursed. We, 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 it's, it's challenging again because we are not prepared. We actually don't know what to do particularly with these monies mm. because at this moment it, it 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 would have been better that each of the state government are actually prepared they have their template they've made their research they've done their community discussions they've done their you know stakeholders discussion and then as soon as the money comes in boom is being channeled towards these things that have been identified to affect the people more but at the moment it seems this is even the right this is even the moment that perhaps most of the state governments will begin to you know uh, look at okay where can we put this money in what can we do which um, which which is not good enough so it, it we needed to be more proactive in our actions we needed to like think ahead 
you know, beyond like just reacting. So I, I agree with you. So that then again, to, you, okay, go ahead, please. Then, then secondly, to your question of uh, even being enough, you know, come on, 200 million people, uh, 5 billion, uh, why it's something billion if you look at the total. That's, that's a very paltry sum. That's a very paltry sum uh, 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 in all ramifications. So it's, it's, it's just like a drop of water in an ocean, you know. So with the myriads of challenges affecting Nigerians, transportation, food, uh, insecurity, and so many other things that you can think of. It's, 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 it's just like a starting point. You know, you know when you, you just like you're trying to walk and then you're taking those baby crawling steps. So uh, I believe uh, it's a starting point. And then the state governors as well, uh, we, we, are, we, just, we, we understand that from, from July, the, 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 the disbursement to each governors, I mean to each government and state government was more compared to what we used to have in the past, mm. perhaps from the savings of uh, subsidy Absolutely. removal. So I think these are also other news for government to, for state governors to do more. You know, because we, we just keep happening on concentrating on the federal government at most times in Nigeria. But we, we needed now to, you know, start holding state governors accountable and probably even the local, gov uh, local government uh, uh, and so on. If the autonomy, because they've been granted autonomy, if their monies are, are being disbursed to them directly, also they are the closest to their uh, to the people and to the citizens. We need to start holding this two tier of government accountable for what they do with these monies. In, in fact, now that they have more uh, allocations as a result of subsidy uh, savings. Indeed, but would you suggest that civil society groups uh, begin to mount pressure on this? leaders at state levels and local government levels to let them know that just as all eyes on the judiciary all eyes on them too to see what they do with these monies because we have the two challenges of one the lack of trust you know confidence in these governors and the fact that they appear not to be ready at all to do anything they're not ready for the money they've gotten they're not ready to have done something on their own for their people had they not gotten any money from the federal government yeah, I agree with you. Not only the civil society organizations. In fact, as, as every Nigerian, I think it's our responsibility to hold our government accountable from all levels. I know the Freedom of Info Information Bill has been passed and a, a lot of people, uh, not only civil organizations, a lot of people are taking advantage of that to request for what government is doing. So I think it behoves on every one of us, myself and yourself inclusive, particularly the journalists here. Uh, we shouldn't just um, rely on uh, what the government turns out as um, as um, as news. You know, we should go beyond that to investigate: Are these things really happening? Because, yeah, like you mentioned, there is lack of trust between the citizenry and the government. So, if the governor says, or the government says, like if I even mentioned earlier, the the, the one five billion have been moving around. But what I'm seeing in the document is four billion. If you calculate. Um, uh, 2.80 billion that is said to be the 15 percent, and one mi one billion nine hundred twenty that is said to be the 48 percent. What I'm seeing is four billion. So uh, you know those are some of the challenges. So um, so we should investigate more. We should dig deeper and ask government questions. Ask people government. Ask sorry. Ask uh, uh, let people ask government questions. I, I I I don't understand the fact that sometimes we have one-on-one -on -one situations with these governors or even this local government chairman or even with the president and we ask them a uh, question that doesn't really you know uh, make any impact on the citizen we should go deep and ask uh, nail-biting questions and ask what are they doing and why are they doing and how are they expending taxpayers money and for what reason and so on and so forth so it's very important that the government is held accountable by all and sundry not only the civil society organizations indeed indeed thank you so much mohammed abdullahi uh, for your time on the breakfast this morning uh, thank you very much mohammed abdullahi public affairs analyst has joined us on the first hot topic on the breakfast we take a break and come back with the second hot topic do stay with us <laughs>